inside. Raheem Hales of Florida did not great position in M5 to get this pull. Morales Williams does not give it to him, but nobody had to break stride. It's going to be Christopher Morales Williams winning this section, but is he going to run fast enough to unseat Chris Robinson? Oh, yeah. He just altered his lifetime best by close to a second, 44-49. In fact, that's a world record. Oh, my gosh, Christopher Morales. This week was truly the Wild West in track and field. Many of the bigger names were getting dialed in for the indoor world champs. That's in less than seven days. So the young guns would be the stars of the show. And God dang, did they not disappoint. At the New South Wales Night of Miles, we'd get a 1500 meter rematch between Jake Whiteman, the 2022 world champ in this event, and 17 year old wonder kid, Cameron Myers, who was quite literally barely contained in last week's matchup. He had learned from his mistakes, bleeding around the final bend and coming home to some of the finest Australian race commentary up for offer. It's the 17 year old and the world champion, Jay Edwards down the outside. Myers extends, the 17 year old is gonna scalp them all here and potentially run this standard. 333.3, it's another Olympic qualifier. Three minutes, 33.3 seconds. An absolutely incredible victory. A new world lead over Yarrett Nagus and an Olympic qualifying time all in one for the young 17 year old. We're seeing the birth of another distance running monster. Now over in France, Mondo Duplantis would decimate a top field by 10 centimeters, winning out with a clean vault of 6.02 meters. Then without a second thought, he'd immediately push the bar to world record territory, 6.24 meters. And what an incredibly close jump. He'd tickle the bar off, just missing out on a possible 8th world record. That's actually just silly. At the final World Indoor Gold meeting in Spain, Devin Charlton would return, two weeks after breaking the 16 year old woman's 60 meter hurdle world record. And she'd run 100th of a second behind it, 7.68 seconds, the second equal fastest time in history, and it just so happens, the four fastest times in history in this event have now been run in the span of two weeks. The men's 800m would see the birth of a new world leader, as Italy's Catalan Ticucinau, I'm sorry if I butchered that one, would lay down a 145 flat, a new PR by a second, and national record. Also in the men's 60 hurdles, fellow countryman Lorenzo Simonelli would also put up a new national record, taking the win in 7.46 seconds. The Italians always surprise with how goddamn good they are at track and field. Then to finish out the day, we'd get an epic showdown in the men's shot put. We'd see two throwers go over 22 meters with Tom Walsh from New Zealand and Rajendra Campbell from Jamaica. In his final attempt, Campbell would edge out the win, having to break Jamaica's national record in the process with a 22.16 meter throw, also going number 12 on the indoor all-time list. The biggest drama in track and field this week was the change to the long jump boards. A slew of negative feedback by professionals and ex-athletes followed, and there was a lot of embarrassing and just absolutely useless whinging, but also some good counter arguments amongst the noise. On one hand, should we stop innovation without even trying, the sport is struggling and it's a cool concept. But on the other hand, besides the newer boards injuring athletes, the removal of the precise boards does remove skill, risk, and the old records. As a pretty shocking long jumper, I'd welcome it for a trial year or two. Guy Learmonth, a Scottish 800 meter runner who qualified for world indoors via rankings, is snubbed by the UK team selection committee. And the story's gone quite viral, but it's never as simple as the headline. He did qualify via rankings, but he ran poorly at his national champs. And the national champs often hold a lot of weight in the selection process. Basically, do bad, don't get selected. It is a complicated matter, but it does happen every year on different teams. And last for news, World Athletics, bring out the backhand shit talk, releasing this article. And honestly, it seems like a very intentional attempt to call top athletes who dodge world indoors pussies. And it works. 2023 1500 meter world champ Josh Kerr announced he wouldn't be competing at indoors. And then around the time this article released, suddenly he was. A bit of a coincidence, I like to think. To start the 24th, Molly Cordry, for the second week in a row, would extend the women's pole vault world lead. 4.86 meters, her third world lead for the year, and she didn't even touch it. She defeated a tough lineup involving Vilma Murto, the bronze medalist at the 2023 World Champs. And at this point, she's looking to be the major favorite at Glasgow. 
Heading to the track and field G League, the NCAA held their indoor conference championships this week. And it was truly the wild fucking west out there. The biggest highlight came from 19 year old sophomore Christopher Morales taking a massive win in the men's 400m at the SEC champs. A collegiate record of 44.49 seconds. In fact, that's a world record. Scratch that, it was actually a world record. Dude smoked his PR by 0.9 of a second to take Michael Norman's old world record by 0.03 of a second. Absolute shocked faces all around, and no one in the field was with an entire second of him. The 60 meter has been the event this year in the NCAAs, with the men's fastest coming from the Big Ten champs. Chikna Traore would beat out rising star Caleb Walker and the men's 60, 6.54 seconds. Traore was previously a Div 3 athlete and has been going crazy this season. Shout out to Coach Rob for the video on this fella. He would also happen to double up at the champs, taking the 200 meter title as well, 20.44 seconds. Although this was on an indoor 400 meter track, which before today I had no idea existed. The fastest women 60 out of the NCAA champs would come from 19 year old Brianna Liston. She's a Jamaican national representing LSU and ran a 7.08 seconds winning the SEC title convincingly. She ran the fastest time across all conferences and still not even a personal best. At the Big 12 Texas Tech edges closer and closer to world domination. They would take 1, 2 and 3 in the women's 60 meter final. Chuk Wuma, Colbert and Umakuro sweeping in times of 7.23, 7.26 and 7.28, although they did run faster in the heats. The Texas Tech men would copy their homework but change it a little. In qualifying, 6 out of the top 7 times would be dominated by them, Caleb Dean leading with a 6.52. But in the final, the times wouldn't be as fast and Terence Jones would false start. Dondre Swint would end up taking the win in 6.55 and Masawangani would break up the Texas Tech sweep, taking second in 6.6, .6, getting some filthy looks while he was at it. In the 200, Terrence Jones would be back with a vengeance, dominating in a time of 20.21 seconds, an equal world lead with prodigy Arion Knighton, and a new giant personal best. This race really proved given the opportunity to run the 60, he was more than in form. Masawangani again denied a W for the day, who ran 20.41 the heat prior and a South African record for himself. At the ACC champs, Cameron Rose took the men's title in the 60. Good start for Cameron Rose though in lane number two. Here comes Escano as well. Look at Keyshawn Black trying to get... But what the fuck was that? 6.58 for... come on. This isn't the first time we've seen what looks like a definite false start go by in the NCAA. They really need to tighten up on this shit. The highlight of the SEC champs would be freshman domination. Kenyon Sola Ajayi, a 19 year old Nigerian native, ripping Auburn, takes the 60 meter title in 6.60 seconds. While Jamisha Ford, a 19 year old freshman at South Carolina, would convincingly win the 200 meter title in a 22.36 second time, tying her PR and the fifth fastest all time at the NCAAs. Then out into the field, Lamara Diston would make history, becoming the first Jamaican to surpass the 2 meter barrier at the SEC Champs. This set a new NCAA indoor record and broke her own national record of 197, which she happened to jump last week. Women's high jump continues to go hard. Wayne Pinnock, last year's world champ silver medalist, would be the highlight of the NCAA men's jumps, taking the SEC long jump title 8.28 meters making that his fourth title in the NCAAs. Michaela Rose would go on to annihilate the 800 meter field at the SECs running a 1 minute 59.25 second time. Now the second fastest time ever in the NCAAs, yet still a reasonable 0.85 seconds away from the number one spot, held by of course the legendary A Thing Moo. And lastly, the ridiculous return of Parker Velby. She cruised to a 3000 meter conference title in the SECs in one of the most absurdly packed fields on an indoor track I've ever seen. I didn't even know they let shit like this slide. It was such a routine run for her, she was being anti-paced by her teammates trying to stop her from going too hard too early. The second fastest time of the year and a victory of just under 30 seconds. Right as the week was closing, would see the first 90 meter javelin throw of the year by 19 year old Max Denning. 
This result was so out of pocket. It's a world lead by 6 meters and the furthest throw by a teenager ever. And it also shattered his own previous personal record by, get this, over 10 meters. Whatever this man was doing in the offseason needs to be studied. And the very last highlight would be Russia's Natalia Spurdanova becoming the fourth woman over 2 meters this year in the high jump. She sent her personal best from 195 to 197 and finally breaking the elusive 2 meter barrier all in this one meet. You love to see it. I swear there are no down weeks in track and field. It's the final week of prep before an indoor world champs and my ass cheeks were clenched the entire time. World records by college students, high schoolers scalping world champs, and world athletics gaslighting the community, and the athletes themselves. You can't make this shit up. Thanks for watching. See you next time.